Welcome to the Library of Humanity. Today we're going to continue talking about how Jesus was an enlightened teacher, an enlightened being. It's a really windy day out here on the farm, but it's really nice as well. So that's why I want to be out here uh, making videos, even though it might seem kind of low quality, like my hair, my hair is going everywhere. I don't shower every day and that's totally okay. Um, today we're looking at the verses directly from the Bible because the Bible is the only source that we have for who Jesus was. So we want to dive into the exact words of Jesus to understand the context, recontextualizing Jesus in today's age as an enlightened master from the past. Someone who mastered the fact that he is the one, the oneness. Okay, so Jesus is going to talk about how I am the way, the truth, and the life. That's just a perfect example of how he woke up to the fact that he is not Jesus. In fact, he's actually Christ. So that's, and in my next video, I'm going to show you the difference between Jesus and Christ. But in this one, I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to read the words from the Bible, and then I'm going to interpret it from my perspective, even though my hair is going everywhere. That's all right. So first we have Mark chapter 8. It says, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me and the gospel will save it. So one really important thing in trying to become enlightened is losing your life. What that means is your life means your ego. So you have to completely lose your ego or disattach yourself, your oneness, your inner Christ. You have to disattach that from your ego. That's a huge part. So a disciple means you're a follower of what Jesus talked about. And so you can think of if someone maybe even in your town was espousing or talking about these really deep ideas about going beyond your ego and entering into the realm of oneness, well, you would be their disciple. So during this time, people follow Jesus. Uh, he's, so Jesus says, take up your cross and follow me. So your, the cross, I don't really know exactly what that symbolizes um, by taking up your cross, but I assume it kind of means like, instead of, instead of worshiping your life, you worship this path, the path towards oneness. And so to say, and it says to save their life will lose it. So anyone trying to maintain their ego will lose their soul. But it says, but whoever loses their life for me and the gospel will save it. So you will lose your ego by following the words of Jesus. The gospel represents the word of Jesus. So Jesus himself and then his word and you, uh, you save your life, meaning you become the oneness by following Jesus to the T, to uh, his ultimate, the ultimate potential. Next we have Matt, Matthew chapter 5. He says, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. So the reason, so that's one of the, my favorite phrases from Jesus, because I don't think anybody from the past talked about how you're supposed to actually love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Meaning, you're supposed to pray for someone who hurts you because you know that they're ignorant. So you have to pray that, or you have to hope that the, all of the ignorance in the world becomes less. And that's, and I think that's a very stage turquoise, meaning stage turquoise is when you open up to oneness. So when you open up to the oneness at stage turquoise in spiral dynamics, and you see that you, have, you actually don't hate people, you hate ignorance, but you love the people who are ignorant. That's kind of the purpose. Um, then we have Matthew chapter 22. Jesus says, love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. So when you are really striving towards that oneness, you put your entire life towards that. All of your, all of your energy in every single moment from your heart, your soul, and your mind. Next we have John chapter 16. It says, in me you may have peace. Um, so I don't, I, mean, I don't claim to be a Bible, uh, biblical scholar, but um, in me, so Jesus is saying is, so in Jesus you may have peace. 
not just peace, but eternal peace. So through, through following the words of Jesus, you have eternal peace. Uh, in this world, you will have trouble. So by, by being an ego attached to the world, seeing that there's this ego and then there's this outside world, that's always full of trouble and suffering. So trouble, you could say, is samsara, or suffering. But to take heart, I have overcome the world. This, this is Jesus saying that he was enlightened. I have overcome the world. I mean, I don't know how much more evidence you need. Overcoming the world means that you're, you are in the world, but not of the world. Uh, that means that you basically are the world. You're not, you're not yourself. You just are the world. Next we have John chapter 10. Jesus literally said, I and the Father are one. Okay, and here you don't even need to think that Jesus is your I and Brahman. So the Father is Brahman. Or, so God the Father, meaning the Father would be like this, the, the beautiful empty void that is constantly, and so he created the universe at the beginning of time. But also another way of thinking of that is like constantly creating the universe. So I, I have my little dog Nissa here. He's gonna come say hi. Hello, Nissa. Um, Mark, Mark chapter 12 says, "Hear, O Israel." So Israel was the the, uh, the Jewish people at the time, and so he's so Jesus is speaking to all of the people around him. He says, "The Lord our God, the Lord is one." So some some people interpret the Lord is one interpret that as monotheism. Monotheism means that there is only one God. You can't worship like, um, for example, uh, this is very, this comes from Islam, where you can't worship anything else besides the, the ultimate father, the, the one true God. Uh, but however, in Hinduism, it's like you might worship the mountain Aran, Aranchala, Aran, Aranachala, sorry, it's hard to say, Aranachala is this mountain in southern India that um, that Ramana Maharshi worshipped because he said that is that is the manifestation of, of Shiva, or but that would be kind of called uh, that would be blasphemous in Islam and Christianity because you're you're worship you're worshiping something that isn't the ultimate void, the ultimate nothingness. Um, but of course, Christian Christians do that all the time. They, they worship things that aren't the ultimate void. Um, they worship uh, paintings of Jesus and things like this. So uh, a lot of people don't completely follow that. But what I'm saying is the Lord is one, meaning there is only God. There is only God. Whenever you, if you see a picnic table or a chair or a cat, a dog, a car, that is God. That's not, that's not even a car. When you, you can call it a car. It looks like a car, quacks like a car, <laughs> um, but it's it's actually God. So that's our challenge to see that everything is God, even yourself. In Mark 12, it says, "You, Jesus, speaking of Jesus, have truly said that He is one, and there is no other besides Him." So that comes from that comes from Mark, uh, saying. So Jesus said that there is nothing other than God. Nothing other than God. Uh, Ephesians, I think that's how you pronounce it, chapter 4 says, One God and Father of all, who is over all, through all, and in all. So the one God, the Father of all, is over all, meaning uh, guides the universe. He is through all, meaning it's, it's the essence. So through and in, meaning that God is the essence of everything. So you see a tree, and you say, that's it's God. Now we have Matthew chapter 1. The virgin, so the virgin Mary, shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, and he means God with us. Um, so Jesus was, was an avatar. An avatar means that you are, you are God that manifests himself itself or herself, however you want to see God, it's actually all three. God is itself, himself, and herself, it's the same. So God manifests itself into human form in a 
order to be an avatar or a bodhisattva or a, 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 basically a teacher. So God is the, the, the word, the gospel, the word of God in human flesh. And that's what Jesus was. Um, so tomorrow I'll talk about the difference between Jesus and Christ and actually how they're not different. Now we're seeing that in, from the Bible it directly says that Jesus' life was was supposed to be this great um, manifestation of what God is, but just in the form of, of body or human or, or carnation. Uh, we have three more. Here comes, this is Colossians 2. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. That's exactly what I'm talking about. So, for in him capital H him, the whole fullness of deity, deity means like angelic or godlike, dwells, so it belongs in the body, or it, it is in the body. Um, so it's, so the Bible is saying that God can become the body, and actually not can, it actually is, literally God is humans, humans. God is animals, God is plants, you just have to kind of practice your seeing. You have to be able to um, harness and practice your seeing so that you are able to see that everything you got. Uh, so last, lastly, we have John chapter 14. I am the way, the truth, and the life. So that's what I said at the beginning of the video. So uh, the gospel, the word of God, God itself is the way, God is the truth, and the life. So there's, there's nothing else besides the way of God, which I would say is maybe Shakti. Shakti is the movement that you see, the evolution that you see in life is Shakti. And lastly, we have Matthew chapter 6. Do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. So that's what Jesus said, and that's evidence that um, Jesus awoke to the, the infinite creator, and that everything there, there is nothing bad, there is nothing good, it just is what it is. And my dog Nissa is coming, coming to say hi, because it's all love, it's all perfectly, um, in, uh, it's all perfectly created, all perfectly orchestrated, that's the word I was thinking of. So you think of like an orchestra, that's exactly how the universe is, and that's exactly how tomorrow works. Um, and the, the reason why there is suffering, at all is because of ignorance. So you could say, oh, there's suffering in the world. Why, why would God create such a perfect uh, world if there's all of the suffering? It's actually, it's intended suffering because you have to go from the ignorance to the truth. You can't just have, like, I think what, God created ignorance so that we can return to God. And it's just this infinite game. So it's, so when you see, like, humans and plants, it's actually just, it's God pretending not to be God. Uh, and God is disguising itself as a plant. God is disguising itself as a human. Uh, God is disguising himself as like a family gathering. But that's actually the only way that humans can see it, so it's like this message. Uh, the only way that you can see God is through have to kind of change the way that you're seeing the world. Maybe instead of using the word tree, you, you, you just don't use the word tree and you just try to see it as it is. Actual. What is the tree actually? So you just try to not interpret the tree, but just observe the tree as it is. Okay, so that's the that was the word of Jesus. Um, again, I'm not, I'm not Christian. I'm also not non-Christian. Um, I'm not Buddhist, but I'm also not not a Buddhist. But the thing is, I, I see 
religion as kind of like stories, uh, beautiful stories. And that's true with uh, all the religions that I, I've studied. Um, so I, I don't particularly believe that I'm a religious person, but I am spiritual. But I use religion to understand how God works. And also, you don't have to use the word God, you can just use the word oneness or truth. But it's actually all the same thing. That's it. Um, tomorrow or the day after, I'm going to record a video about the nature of Jesus and Christ, how they are different but also the same. So enjoy your day. I'm going to have to go wash my hair. I'll see you then.